How many people in this room believe the world is real? Yes, I know. <laughs> How many people believe this bowl is real? We got, you do? So we have two people that believe this bowl is real. Any more? You just being shy or? Are you really? <laughs> How many believe the world is an illusion? So I'm not getting too many commitments here. The world is an illusion. The world is an illusion. Everything that you see is an illusion. I love my little bowl. Mm -hmm. It's always here. It's just... But this bowl is not real. And what's beautiful is, 500 years ago, if I told you this bowl was not real, you would lock me up in an insane asylum or just say I was crazy or wouldn't listen to me or whatever because you say, yes, it is real. Look, it's made of metal. It's making a sound. If I hit you in the head with it, you'd think it was real, right? But now quantum physics and theoretical physics are proving that this is not real. That it, in fact, is not even here in my hand at this moment. That the quarks that make this up are popping in and out of existence all the time, and that it is not here. And that it is very possible that everything is just a hologram or an illusion, which the mystics have been saying since the beginning of time. It appears real, but it is not. So we're gonna look at that for a few minutes the illusory nature of reality. <clears throat> In the Mystic Seven teachings that I do, I begin with three foundational principles. And if you can abide in these three awarenesses, it's all you have to do. Don't have to do anything else. The first one is, there is a source. Pretty easy one. Everybody probably believes that. Doesn't matter what name you give it, God, Allah, Buddha, Yahweh, your higher power, your collective consciousness, whatever word you want to give it. Most people believe there is a source, something greater than themselves. That's the first one. If you don't believe there is a source, you probably wouldn't even be in this room. <laughs> but maybe you would. The second one is, this, con this source has consciousness. By its very nature, it is aware. And that is self-evident. Because here it is, being aware. So the first one is, there's a source. The second one is, it has consciousness. It is aware. It also has the ability to be non-aware in an infinite number of ways. One way is if you go into awesome prajnata samadhi, where your eyes are closed and you go into total stillness and there's nothing there. No sight, no sound, no visions, no smells, no, no nothing. You're just in awesome prajnata samadhi, complete silence. There's absolutely no awareness. There's no experiencer. There's no experience to experience. Nothing but the self abiding in its own emptiness. It is not aware. In fact, if you were to say the source has a nature, it would be non-awareness. Because there is nothing for it to be aware of and nothing for it to perceive anything with. It also can be non-aware in its illusory manifestations of thought that don't recognize that it is the source. 
There are many of you in this room that you believe that you are a physical body and that you are not God. That is a manifestation of thought within your own mind that is unaware of its true nature. So the source has consciousness. It can be aware or unaware. And all manifestation, everything in the infinite universe, everything, every person, every thought, every sound, every emotion, every planet, every universe, every floor, every light bulb, every bird, every blade of grass, everything in the infinite universe, and infinite's really, really big. Unfortunately, we can't get into that today. It's one of my favorite topics. It's big. All manifestation is thought within the mind of God. Those are the three foundational principles. There is a source. It has consciousness. And all manifestation is simply thought abiding within the mind of God, within your mind as God. Not some guy up in the sky. Not some ethereal something deity. No, within you. 